Hey guys, welcome in this new video. I hope that all of you are doing great. So what you're about to watch is an interview that I did with a man named Jayakar. Really great dude. I really love doing that interview with him. I will put the link of his channel down below so you can go there. He has a bunch of interviews with a lot of very interesting people as well. So you should definitely go watch that. Uh, but yeah, so this is an interview of me that I did with him. We covered so many subjects. Um, it's definitely one of my even favorite video, I think, of all time that I ever done. Uh, just because of the fact that we talk about, you know, trading, life in general, purpose. We went into very deep subjects as well, such as depression, anxiety, uh, your social life, your environment, the mindset, and all of these things. So overall, it's a really great video, I believe, and I hope that you guys will, um, you know, just get a lot of value from watching it. Um, I hope that you will enjoy it as well. It's definitely a very personal video as well. Like I said, I went in a lot of details on deep things, on deep topics, on things that I've experienced in my life. Um, so yeah, I hope that this will help you in any kind of ways. If it does, please share this video. I would truly appreciate it. You can leave a like under the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. That will mean a lot to me. Thank you so much guys for the amazing support you always give to me. I truly appreciate it. That means so much. You cannot even imagine how much. Um, so yeah, on that, I will let you watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Thank you. Hey, Anthony, it's nice to have you here. Um, I've been in touch with your work for about uh, probably four years or three years. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> pretty, you're pretty young, so it's not very nice to have you here. Uh, oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, sure. Um, how old are you now? I'm 18 years old. Oh, I've known <laughs> you since probably 15, 16. I don't know. Um, you're blown up, right? <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> always. <laughs> pretty good. Um, so. Why don't you first introduce yourself, who you are? Yeah, for sure. So my name is Anthony Bouchard. I am a 18 years old forex trader from Quebec in Canada. Uh, so I grew up there. I'm still living there. Um, and you know, I had a pretty normal childhood. Um, nothing really, you know, out the window. Nothing crazy. I grew up with, you know, an average family. Did pretty much average things. Went to school. Uh, did a lot of sport as well when I was younger. And basically now, since uh, I'm 15 years old, so it's been over three years now, I'm you know, doing a uh, business thing and also on social media, doing a lot of trading. Um, so everything related to investing uh, in financial markets and all of these things. So I basically you know, just got into all of that when I was uh, younger. Um, and yeah, like nothing crazy. Like I'm just a very regular person who loves to share what he's doing and you know, just loves um, trading, finance, business, and everything related to that. Uh, listening to your story, like, since 15, that's pretty young. I don't know what I, I was pretty, I, I knew what I wanted to become, but I don't know, like, it's pretty young too, like, for you to figure out what you want to do. So how did you first hear about trading and, like, why only trading? Like, at 15, why were you strongly incl inclined towards doing trading? That's pretty... Yeah. Yeah, so I basically uh, learned what was trading, like I said, when I was 15 years old. Um, I had a friend that was actually uh, trading, already involved in the business. So he just, you know, came to me one day and started sharing me, you know, this opportunity, basically. And as a kid, um, I've always been someone very interested into finance and, you know, just growing, helping people, like, oh, you know, that sphere of, like, business and personal development. It's always something that I've been very interested in because, like I said, I grew up in a pretty, you know, average family. Um, I don't come from a rich family at all. Uh, I, I mean, we were not poor or anything, but, like, we were definitely not, like, rich. Um, so I've always, you know, been someone who wanted more out of life, to experience, um, you know, more travel, more live, more help, more my family and all of these things. So I've always been, you know, kind of attracted to personal growth and, you know, just business in general. And also because I really like, you know, that sphere. So when my friend came to me one day and he started sharing me, you know, what was trading, um, I immediately got interested into the subject. And I remember like the night after 
that I met him and talked about training, like I was already, you know, <laughs> doing, uh, you know, reading books, watching videos, like just trying to grow as much as possible, um, learn as many things as I can, and really just to, you know, get myself into this industry of trading. Um, and at first, I was not like. Um, as passionate as I am right now about trading, like I was doing this more, you know, just as a hobby, like on the side, you know, whenever I had some free time, I was just looking online, you know, doing it uh, very more casually, we can say, I guess. Um, and after that, then when I really got more into trading, when I found my mentors, when I really, you know, started to understand the potential of trading as well, because, you know, this industry is crazy like the, the potential of trading is like it's limitless like really like there's no limit about how much money you can make and what you can achieve from that so when when i really like realized that that's when i really you know wanted to okay like pursue that right like really got into this a lot more seriously started you know um searching mentors like i said started uh, taking courses investing a lot more time in trading than school at one point i was still going to school i was in high school when I started uh, to trade, uh, mm -hmm. but I was a lot more focused on <laughs> trading than school in itself. Um, and yeah, like I was 15 years old, like you said, and I just think that it was very clear for me, you know, pretty early on what I wanted to do with my life. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just followed what I love, right? And that's something I really talk about often on, you know, on social media and on my posts and my videos, but like, just because I'm a trader doesn't mean that everyone needs to be a trader and it doesn't mean that you know it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing for me, right? But it's not the right thing for everyone. So at the end of the day, like I just followed what I love to do, you know, and it just came very naturally to me. So I guess that's how I ended up here with you. Oh, that's so nice to like for you to say that because yeah. people tend to have these ideas that maybe I need to become that to be like wholesome, but it's that's not the case. It's like do whatever you love and it might be anything so for sure when i look at you all of those chains <laughs> in the photos uh the rings uh what's your inspiration for that uh my style mm -hmm. your style it's pretty unique well uh yeah i'm, I'm definitely uh, a little different i think from the outside mm -hmm. um I think it just came, you know, from different inspiration. I love music as well. It's one of my big passions. So, and you know, not, not just hip hop. That's what a lot of people will associate me with. But you know, I love classical music as well. I listen a lot to, you know, Beethoven and you know, uh, Chopin and all of these people. Um, I love like all sort of music. I love also, you know, uh, Naruto, which is why I have this, right? Uh -huh. this I love Naruto has a, you know, kind of bandana like this and hair, you know, kind of similar to this. So. That's what inspired me, and you know, a lot of like the the things I wear actually have a meaning behind mm -hmm. the the thing I actually wear. Like I just I don't just wear you know these rings or you know this watch just you know to show up or whatever. Like they all have a meaning. So for example, this is a Jesus piece. Mm -hmm. So for me, religion is very important. It's a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, these you know two crosses, little ones right here. One. Hold on, I'll try to pull the, these two out. You see these two? Yeah. So this one is the first piece of jewelry I ever bought. Mm -hmm. And this one came from my grandmother. And you see these are just, you know, two examples of what I wear. But everything, literally everything I have on me has a meaning behind it. So I don't even wear these, these things, you know, just to show off or act your cool or whatever. But like, they all are a reminder for me. So you see, for example, this Rolex right here. Mm -hmm. But it's a reminder for me that time is important. Time is the most valuable thing you can have on this planet because you can always get more money, right? You can always get more money. But time is very, very, very limited. Mm -hmm. And you can never get more time. So this is a reminder that time is valuable. So you see, I don't like everything has a meaning. And so for me, these are just reminders to what I need to keep in mind and what I want to live my life according to. So that's really like the deepest reasons why I do these things. And, you know, also, well, just because uh, I love and, you know, I'm just being like, I'm just doing my own thing. You know, I don't really care about what people say. I know that, and especially, you know, in the trading world, I know that a lot of people will judge me just because of how I look. They all think I'm not a serious trader or whatever. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't really care. I'm just, you know, being myself and, 
you know, I'm doing my own thing, and at the end of the day, I think that what is real will prosper, and so, yeah, that's that's really the answer, I guess. For an 18 year old, you seem to be very, uh, like, uh, I don't know, your thought process is pretty unique and uh, pretty, you're pretty wise too. Um, so, Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of people are against these things, but I don't think that's anything against, like, jewelry and stuff. It's like, like anything else. So, um, yeah. what's your lifestyle like as a trader? Um, how do you live your life as a trader so it's pretty I, I don't I know I have no idea about it so I'm just curious to know what's your lifestyle like yeah well um, now I'm still going to college I have a few months left that I will finish um, so I finished you know uh, by I think it will be April this year that I finished basically so in a few months from now um, so I'm still going to college but it's you know I, it's not a big part of my life I have like you know, 20 hours of classes like during the week, so it's very a small you know part of my time. So the rest of my time, uh, like I said before, I'm trading. That's my main thing. Um, you know, I, I see myself as a trader more than anything else. So I'm trading. I have also a course online which I teach people how to trade uh, the financial markets. So these are pretty much my two main occupations. Um, and then I have also, you know, I, lo I love to post a lot on social media, um, create videos, create content, you know, just to inspire people and share what I'm doing. But basically how my day goes, normally, you know, I wake up in the morning pretty early around 5, 6 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, 5, 6 a.m. <laughs> um, after that, usually, you know, I just, you know, do the normal things. I take a breakfast, do some exercise, reading as well in the morning. I like to do, and then I jump on the market. I usually will look at all the charts that I trade, follow all my technical analysis, look if I have any opportunities that I can take now, and then I go on with my day. So usually in the morning I'll have uh, classes with my students. Um, so I so in the course I mentioned before, I do one on one classes as well. So it's usually in the morning that I do them. After I'll probably go and you know post something on social media, do more training after in the afternoon. Um, and you know the, the night is more uh, you know it's more a time of that I take for me, meaning you know reading, um, thinking, strategizing. I, I really like to you know just be by my side and do my own thing. You know just be here, like you see all these, you know, papers behind me, all these codes, um, mm -hmm. well, they, they are there, like, just, you know, once again, as a reminder to help me, uh, you know, and keep me focused on what I want to do. So I'd say that's pretty much how I structure my day. So in the morning, I really like to do everything related to business, trading. Uh, if I have classes on school, of course, I'll go there. Uh, and in the afternoon, it's more, uh, you know, just keeping up with stuff, continuing, you know, uh, developing things and on the night it's really more personal time. Oh, sounds great. <laughs> um, it is. I like it. That that was my, that was the next question. So do you, you do love it? Of course you do love it. That's why you do it. Um, so uh, one of the theme that I always get into uh, with all of the people I'm talking to is mental health and uh, probably like uh, because. Doing these things on a day-to-day -day basis, it, se it seems like it might be stressful or, or, I don't know, not only the work, but some people might have neurological challenges. Uh, so uh, what's your opinion or what's your take on your mental health and how are you uh, making it uh, like a priority and taking care of it? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. I like that one. Um, yeah, for sure. Mental health is definitely, you know, one of the most important thing um, and if you're not healthy in the mind first mm -hmm. then I believe that nothing else can be healthy right when you really think about it we often talk about health you know physical health doing exercise eating well and all of these things but if your mindset is not healthy in the first place mm -hmm. well you will not do these things mm -hmm. So I think the first thing that people, and myself included, have to take care of is this part. And you know, we live in a society where a lot of people have mental problems. Um, it's proven, there are a lot of research done about that, there are so many people you know, suffering from depression. 
depression, anxiety, and all of these things. And I've been through that as well, right? I mean, I think at some point we will all go through this. It's part of life. Uh, but I've definitely had times where I was feeling down, where I was, you know, feeling more depressed, more sad, uh, a lot of anxiety in my life. So I've definitely, you know, experienced these type of things. So I know what it is, and you know, I can relate to people who actually are in that type of situations. Uh, but now, you know, as I'm growing up and as I'm developing myself, um, I'm able day after day to, you know, overcome these things and, you know, reach my next level, basically. Uh, but like, if there's one thing I think that really helped me and still helps me to this day, right? You, you know, just keeping up a good mindset, a positive mindset, always striving for the best. I think it's, it just comes really from being grateful for what you already have, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you think about it, as we talk right now, right? And as the people who are watching this video right now, there are millions of kids who don't even have access to water, mm -hmm. right? Like they cannot even heat, right? They cannot. They don't even have a house. Mm -hmm. And like, we're so lucky, right? Um, you know, I could have, you know, grew up in I don't know a, you know, in like a poor country, right? Like in in a communist country or in you know in another period of time. Like I mean, there's like all the circumstances around us and around our lives made us, right? We come from the outside, right? We're built from the outside. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you are a bit uh, frozen there. Uh, can you see me? Yeah, I still see you. Um, you're still frozen. Um, oh. let, me, let me call you back, okay? Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah, yeah that's recording. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about being grateful, so. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, I, I was talking about, like, that you could have been born into, you know, a poor country or another time or, you know, with a bad family, right? Like, there's just so many circumstances that could have been different and that would have made you a different person. And so, at the end of the day, I believe that you and I are very lucky just because of the fact that we are living Mm -hmm. right now right if you think about it like we are alive right we don't have a disease we have access to water we have a roof under our head like there's just so many things that we can be grateful for and so when you actually take the time to think deep and look at what you actually have versus what you want to have and stop complaining and start being grateful about what you have then you become in a much better mindset you start you know just realizing things you, you start you know thinking with abundance and you start being grateful for what you have and at the end of the day I believe that is one of my you know main drives in life just because of the fact that we're so lucky and you know I've been given a lot to right by God by my family by my friends by my the people who support me and so at the end of the day I believe that I have to be the best version of myself in order to give back to those who already gave a lot to me you understand so I really want to, you know, like I said, grow as the person I want to become. And for that, I need to keep a positive mindset. And how I keep a positive mindset is by being grateful. And that is really the, you know, fundamental of how I think on a day to day basis. Like, whenever something goes wrong, when I heard, whenever I, I meet an obstacle, roadblocks, you know, even people shitting on me, haters, all these things, right? I always keep a positive mindset. Always, always, always. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's hard, like I said at the beginning, right? I've experienced uh, a lot of pain before, you know, anxiety, depression, all these things. So sometimes it's very hard. But at the end of the day, I always try to keep that positive mindset. And that's why, like I said before, I, you know, in the night, I always take some time for myself alone just by, uh, you know, reading thinking, listening to audiobooks, videos, whatever it might be, just, you know, time for myself and to make sure that my mindset is ready and mm -hmm. good for the next day. And I always do this. And at the end of the day, that's how I'm able to, you know, keep thinking about being grateful and out of these things. Because sometimes what I've realized is that a lot of people, like, understand, you know, this principle of being grateful, but they just don't think about it, right? Like, you know, like, if I come to you and I say, are you grateful? Well, a lot of people will say, yes, I am. 
but on a day-to-day -day basis, they don't really think about it. You understand? Like, it's a really big difference uh, to accept something and understand something versus, uh, you know, thinking about it and living according to that. So, I like, I really try as much as possible to develop myself in order to uh, have this mindset and in order to keep a positive energy because I believe that whatever you put out on the universe you get back right mm -hmm. that's how you know the law of attraction works mm -hmm. so when you keep a positive energy when you keep a positive mindset well ultimately that's what you put on the universe and that is most likely what is going to show up in your life so that's really you know the let's say two core basics that and fundamentals that I keep in my life in order to you know keep striving for the best and being grateful. Uh, great. Um, let's let's talk right into like what exactly you do in trading. How do you make money in trading? Um, yeah. So I'll and I'll explain a little bit what is trading first, because uh, a lot of people probably don't know much about trading that are watching this video right now. Um, and you know, when we say trading, it's a very general concept, right? Because we can trade pretty much anything in life. Like, you can trade, I don't know, shoes, you can trade books, you can trade, you know, financial markets, like, you can trade anything. Mm -hmm. So, when we say trading, we're talking more specifically about the financial markets. And so, the financial markets is also a pretty general term because you have many different financial markets. So, the one that I trade the most and the one that I focus on the most is the Forex market. So the forex market means foreign exchange market. So I'll give you an example and you see you know what it is and just with that example you understand very well what it means. So I live in Canada. Mm -hmm. So let's say that I want to go to Europe, right? Well I will have to exchange my Canadian dollar to Euros in order to be able to you know do transactions there. So let's say I go to the bank, I have one thousand Canadian dollar and I exchange that to euros, right? So if after that I keep the amount of money in euros that I got and I don't buy anything, I don't sell anything, I don't do any transactions. And let's say that you know with that money I hold on to it for one month. Uh -huh. Well, when I will do the transaction back to have my Canadian dollar, I will not have exactly one thousand dollar. I will have maybe one thousand and five dollar or $995. So you see there will be a little difference about how much money I will get from that transaction um, versus you know the first transaction. And so that difference is caused by the fluctuation of the exchange rate between the two currencies. Mm -hmm. As a trader, that is exactly what I'm doing. As simple as that, I'm looking at the chart the chart in itself is telling me something. When you learn how to read the chart, you will see that you know the chart has some patterns that repeat themselves over and over again. So when you learn these patterns and when you learn how to trade them, well, you can very precisely predict what the market is likely going to do, right? The next move. And so when you are able to predict that, you're able to take the right transactions. And so with that, you're able to make profits or loss, right? You know, it's not always profit, obviously. Uh, every trader has losses, it's part of the game, but at the end of the day, that's really what we're doing. So we're looking at charts. Um, these charts are telling us what is likely the next move going to be, and on that, we take the transactions, and over a long period of time, that's how you will be able to make profits on these markets. So that's really as simple as that. So the hard part, um, at the end of the day, is just you know learning the skill of analyzing those charts, because at first, it may seem very simple. It may seem, you know, oh, like you're just looking at one chart and okay, it goes up, it goes down. No, 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 no. That's way more complex than that. And that's something that I try to very uh, push at its maximum on my social media, like I said, um, because a lot of people want to get into trading and they believe that, you know, it's something so easy, like it's something so you know, common, like, and, you know, you, everyone can be a profitable trader, but the reality is that it's a very hard skill to learn, and very few people are actually able, at the end of the day, to become a profitable trader, so um, that's really, you know, the, the bottom line, and that's what is important to keep in mind, is that it's a hard skill to learn, and if you don't put in enough time and energy into it, you will never be a profitable trader, but if you do, then you can be a profitable trader and it can be very rewarding. So 
Uh, but you know, to come back to the question, is really just like looking at charts, understanding them, and after when you understand them, you can take the right trade. Uh, you you did make six figures with this thing. Uh, not only with trading, but like you know, I, I've had more than one business uh, than the one I'm running now, which is Reverse on Master, like I said before, my trading course. So I've had multiple business. Uh, I have trading, social media. I'm doing marketing as well. I have long-term investment. So you know, I have you know some sources of income, uh, and I've been doing this for you know uh, over three years now. So I've made you know good money. Let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> For an 18 year old, that's impressive, dude. Thank um, you, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, so anyone in the world can do this thing or is it like restricted to some areas? Because I heard um, in India it's not possible or it's restricted, I've heard some stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, so I had a student who actually lives in India and he cannot trade all the Forex pairs, but he can trade some of them. So he can trade the pairs uh, that actually have the Indian rupee in it, you know. Okay. So, um, you know, at the end, it's like, yes, anyone can trade forex, but at the same time, like I said, it's not everyone that can actually become a profitable trader, and that's really an important thing to understand is that a lot of people simply, you know, will never be profitable, and that's just how it goes. Like it's very much harder than people think, mm -hmm. right? Like it's not just looking at the chart like twenty seconds and okay, like I take a trade and. You know, in two years, I'm a millionaire. Like, <laughs> that's not how it goes. You know, like it's a lot more complex than what people think it is. So, in the in the direction of your question, right? When we say, can anyone trade forex? Yes, but not everyone will be profitable, and that's really the big difference and the important shift that is important to make in people's mind, I believe, and that's why, like I said, I try to push this as much as possible because I don't want to be, you know, the motivator or the cool dude who trades or whatever, like I just, you know, I want to speak the truth and I want to help people as best as I can. And so, for me, one of the ways that I actually help people, I believe, is to tell them that, hey, yes, you can trade Forex, but it doesn't mean that it will be profitable. And I'll give you this statistics Anthony, right here Anthony, that I think... Anthony. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, cool. You <laughs> it's good? Uh-huh. Yep. It's good? Yep. All right, perfect. So, yeah, I was talking about, you know, why uh, and how a lot of people actually don't succeed in trading. And to give you a very important statistics, right, that will speak much more than everything I just said. Uh -huh. Nine people out of ten are not profitable. Oh, <laughs> that's right, right hmm. to my face there. <laughs> yes, nine people out of ten who actually try to trade end up losing money. Uh -huh. And in that 10%, it also includes the people who are not really losing money, but they're not really making money either. So in reality, there's like 5% of people who actually end up making money trading. Uh -huh. So if you think trading is easy, <laughs> we think it. it's not yeah. right. Um, it's simple in the aspect of when you actually know the skill and when you understand what you're doing, it becomes very simple, right? Like it's not hard. Like 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 I said to you, like you know, when we talk about what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis, well, every day you know I take one or two hours and I look at the charts and when I see the opportunity, I take the trade. Like it's very 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 simple. But at the same time, it's very hard to learn the skill. And that statistic speaks for itself, right? So many people just end up losing money. Um, and, you know, there are many, many reasons for that. If you want, we can go into them and I can explain them, you know, on a deeper level. But, you know, there are a lot of reasons why people end up losing money, sadly. Uh -huh. Can you, can you, like, give me a couple of reasons? Yeah. So, the one of the main reasons is that simply people don't know how to manage their emotions. Remember what I talked before about, right? Mindset. That is the first thing you need to take care of in anything that you do, mindset. Nothing is more important than your mind, right? You have the control of your mind, but you can lose that control if you actually let other people distract you from what you actually think is right. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so to come back to the question, a lot of people will simply get into their emotions with trading, right? They trade with their emotion, and that is such a big mistake. Um, you know, they have feelings with the trades that they take, or they have feelings with the money that they trade with, and that's a big problem. And so, as a trader, and it may sound a little weird, but as a trader, you want to be a robot. Okay. You want to have no emotion at all. Like that's really the bottom line. Like if you have emotions with your trading, it's already game over. There's nothing you can do. If you trade with your emotion, over. That's it. You will never be profitable. Never. Can, can you give me an example how like people mess up by like yes. getting emotional? So yes. So there's basically two main situations where people mess up because of their emotions. So one of them is that when people will have many losses in a row, right? So they lose, they lose, they lose, they lose. Well, they start to get in a mentality of, oh my God, I just lost, you know, whatever X amount of money. I need to make it back quick. Uh-huh. So what they go after, they will, you know, oversize. They will risk way too much than they should. And they just end up losing everything. So that's the first situation. People just you know lose, 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 and they want to get that money back very quick, right? It's emotions. We don't like to lose as human. It's in our nature. It's our DNA. Um, so they try to get all that money back, and they just end up losing everything because they over risk. That's the first thing. Second thing um, is when a lot of people. Uh, well, it, it's actually kind of the opposite. So instead of lose, 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 lose. Some people will start you know, their trading journey and will go with win, 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 okay. right? So when you win so many trades in a row, what can happen if you're not strong enough mentally is that you start to say things to yourself like, oh my God, I'm such a great trader, like I'm the best, I know what these markets are doing, I know exactly what I'm doing, I'm so good, right? I'm, I'm the next billionaire, right? <laughs> like That's what a lot, of, a lot of people will fall into, that's their belief. And so what happened with that is that, once again, they win, 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 they gain so much confidence and so much ego that they actually, once again, over-risk it and oversize their position. So they start trading much more money and risking much more money than they should. And guess what? These trades happen to be losing ones. And so they end up losing. So oftentimes it's when a lot of, it's when you know someone will have many wins or many losses in a row and these two scenarios will impact the people's mind and they will impact their emotions and because of that they will take you know the wrong transactions and they will end up losing their money. So these are really like the two main situations where people don't succeed in trading. Sounds like how people mess up in most of the most of their life. I don't know. It's like yeah. Actually yes, that that's that's really true actually. <laughs> Not only trading, like a lot of people get like you said, you know, in that type of mindset and it, it can be on anything. Uh, so it's really, you know, that's why I say mindset, right? Nothing is more important than this. So that's right. Um, so let's say a guy is in Canada and yeah. he's like, dude, I'm completely in debt. I don't know why I went to college. I'm in debt right now. I need to start building myself up. What would you do if you were in his shoes? Definitely not trading. Okay. <laughs> Definitely not trading. Okay. Um, because, and I'm actually glad, glad that you're bringing this up because that's a very common thing. Like I get so many messages every day, and people are like, "Oh, Anthony, I'm struggling. I don't have much money right now. Uh, you know, I, I want to start trading so that you know I can help myself and you know get out of debt." Don't ever do that. It will never work. Mm-hmm. Because. I just want to. I just want to say one thing. You, thanks for being honest. Like being bluntly honest about it. Like for sure, I am. I'm. I'm mean, open book. I guess that's what we say, right? <laughs> like you know, at the end of the day, like I said, I'm just a very normal person. So I like to share what I know, and if it can help people, then I'm very glad to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, so to come back to what I was saying, uh, not trading. That's the first thing because when you're in debt, right? Uh-huh. You already have a lot of emotions with your money, mm-hmm. and remember what we just talked about before. Uh, if yeah. you have emotions, mm-hmm. game over. Mm-hmm. So definitely not trading. 
Um, I guess it depends also on the size of the debt, right? And if you have like, like you know a, a degree or not. But I think let's business. Say, let's let's say twenty thousand CAD. Okay. Well, I'd say probably. So it all. So you know, it's a very personal question. So it's hard to answer like in a general manner. But if the person actually likes business, I'd say probably go into that. But at the same time, have a part-time job because if you start business and you already have thirty thousand in debts, right? Not even related to the business, just related to yourself. Uh, I think it will be very hard. It's not impossible, but it will be much more hard. So you, you know, it's a very personal question. It, it depends on the person. It, it depends on what that person wants to do. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that if you are actually in a hard financial situation, that you need to put in every single minute that you have into your brain. Right? You cannot do other things. Like as blunt and as direct as it sounds, that's the pure truth. Right? Like if if you have thirty thousand dollar in debt, right? Well, no, like everything can be good at this point, right? You, like it's hard to go below that. You understand? <laughs> you know, you can go below that if you have more debt. But the point is, is that you're already at the lowest point. And let me tell you something. What is great about the lowest point is that from there you can rebuild your life the way you want it to be, mm -hmm. right? When you're already low. Well, it's hard to go over. Uh -huh. So from there, you can rise above your sim car, your sim circumstances. I guess that's what we say, uh -huh. um, and just become the person you want to be, right? Um, and so when you actually, you, and you know, and to to even go deeper into that question, because I like it, like I said, to even go deeper, I think it's first start of with knowing yourself. Self-awareness is definitely one of the most important thing to succeed, I believe. Because when you know yourself, when you know your strength, and when you know your weaknesses, this allows you to just focus on what you're actually good at. And so, if you have that and you don't even know what you're good at, that's a major problem. So I'd say the first thing is really just like sitting down deep thinking about what you're actually good at in life. And so when you figure that out, then you can triple down on that. And whatever it is, right? If you're an awesome musician, go do this. If you're good at mathematics, go do this. If you're an awesome businessman, go do this. Like, whatever you're good at, like, if you actually know that and focus on that after, I believe that this is one of the greatest ways to actually overcome your situation. Because when you know that, Mm -hmm. When you know what you're good at, then you can focus on that and just become the best at it, right? Yep. And no matter the industry that you're in, if you're really good, then you will make it. Yep. So self-awareness is the complete, and I think it's really you know the most important thing. And after that, when you know that, you can do whatever is related to what you're good at. So mm -hmm. I guess that was probably my answer. What if he's he he thinks. It's business, and uh, I think that question. I think that's uh, if he is really into business, he'll figure it out. I guess. <laughs> like, yeah. like it's like not even need to like. Uh, I've been talk like I've talked to like a couple of other digital entrepreneurs, and it's not like you teach stuff to them. It's like you don't need to even tell them. It's like, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that the, the, the problem is that um, nowadays being a businessman became cool, right? It's really cool to say like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, right? It sounds so great, right? It sounds like, oh my God, that person has a business. But at the same time, not everyone is built for that. Mm -hmm. And to go even deeper, I think that I'm not... Like, I don't think that my number one skill is business. I don't think it is. That's why uh, before I said that, for, for example, me, I view myself much more as a trader than a businessman. Because in reality, that's what I like the most. Like, if I had to choose one thing, trading, business, I choose trading. Mm -hmm. For sure. 100%. And not just because, you know, I'm making more money there or whatever. It's just because that's what I like. Like, that, that's what I'm good at. So at the end of the day, a lot of people, like you said, try to get into business, but that's not even their thing. So 
that's why self-awareness is extremely important is because when you learn yourself, when you learn who you are, when you learn your patterns, when you learn what you like and what you don't like, this allows you to focus on what you're actually good at and then you can build from that. Sounds pretty, um, I mean, it's simple, but it's pretty tough for most of the people who are like 18 to 30, like even 40, like they don't know, <laughs> like they're just mm. working out of jobs that, that they hate and they don't know what to do. Like they're yeah. depressed, they're taking these pills every single day, antidepressants, but they don't know. They think yeah. it's 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 a struggle for like 95, let's say, percent of the people who are in the working force that they hate their jobs. And it, even the statistics that have come out that 90 to 95 percent of people hate their jobs and they still are really? forced to be in those jobs and are depressed yeah. and are yeah. suicidal. I mean, this is just yeah. a big problem. It's uh, yeah, it's very important to take time for yourself and be self-aware of who you are. And mm -hmm. sometimes people hate the fact that they might earn less money doing what they love. So that's what stops them from being who they are. So it's like, I don't that's know. That's true. Like, a lot of people also need to realize that in today's world, with social media and with you know YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, you can pretty much make good enough money in whatever thing you like. Uh -huh. Like if you go on YouTube and you search anything, you'll find something. Mm -hmm. You'll find a YouTuber who has, you know, a lot of subscribers and lives from that. Yeah. So like at the end of the day, I think that if you use modern skill, uh, such as social media, for example, it can be one of them, uh, then whatever you like to do, I think you can overcome that. And I like the fact that you said that even for older people, it's hard for them to know what they like, and I absolutely agree, like so many people, and that comes also in what I was talking about earlier, which is I'm very lucky, also in the sense of I found what I like very early in my life, mm -hmm. and sadly a lot of people don't have this, right, sadly a lot of people just don't stumble into what they like, and they, they, they find that thing when they're like 60, mm -hmm. so it's just like, oh, well, now I'm old, <laughs> yeah. you know? So I, I think, and that's why I also talk about all the time to, you know, just take time for yourself, take time to think deep, because that's how you find those things. And also, not just by thinking deep, right? Because if you just think in your room, well, nothing will happen, Dude. right? Like, <laughs> you're not going to become a millionaire if you're in your bed and do nothing. So the point here is that when you actually take time to think about what you like and what you don't like, then after you need to experience these things, you need to try them, and you need to be very precisely with how you actually try them in order to realize what you actually prefer the most and what you don't. Okay. So totally, I agree with you. Yep. Um, where are you planning yourself to be in five to ten years from now? What's your like? I don't know. If I just asked this question out of curiosity towards what you are. Let's say we we obviously don't know where we are going to be in 10 years for sure. But yeah. you do have this ideal kind of a scenario where you feel like this is what I want to be. So that's what yeah. uh, I want to know. Like, what's your ideal kind of a state? Um, so here we're talking more about vision, right? Like mm -hmm. what I envision my life to be. Okay. Because um, I don't make, you know, long-term goals. Like, I don't have a five-year goal, right? I try to not even entertain those thoughts. But I certainly have a vision, like you said. Um, so I'd say probably... If I answer with the idea of what I actually like now, which is trading, business, social media, I would like to just continue doing these things growing more, trading a much bigger account, um, having more students so that I can help them the best way I can, uh, helping more people, uh, traveling the world, I'd say probably I want to start traveling actually very soon, I have a few trips for the upcoming summer that are already planned, oh. so I'm definitely traveling more soon, um, you know, just doing more things, inspiring more people, uh, probably have a family as well, that's... Oh. That's what I would like to, um, and yeah, like just, and at the same time, I'd say with that answer to stay very open-minded about what I actually want to do. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and maybe that in three months, my answer could be totally different from what I just gave you. And the reason why is because I'm growing every day. I'm learning every day who I am and what I like. So if I figure out that I like, or if I discover that I like something even more than trading in business, well, guess what? That's what I will do. So part of my answer is I really have no idea because I may find something that I prefer uh, other than trading in business. And so at the end, that's maybe what I will direct my focus on. But you know, if we, you know, make the pretend of yes, I will still be trading in business. Actually, just everything that I'm already doing now, but on a much higher and bigger scale. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, the last question is, we'll end with uh, the most important thing that you touched upon in your last answer, that is relationships with uh, whatever, like you want to be in a relationship. So uh, how do you think it's uh, important as far as being in a relationship as a trader or whatever, as a person in general? And how do you view relationships as a person? Uh, so we're talking more about uh, you know, like like the love relationship. Um, both uh, uh, in with people and also with a partner. Okay. Well, I think it's very important. First of all, because I, I really like um, evolutionary psychology, which mm -hmm. is you know everything related to how we were a long time ago and how we actually are very much the same. Right. Um, if you study that sphere and that industry, well, one of the things you will learn is that the brain of your grand, 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 grandfather is pretty much the exact same that you have now. <laughs> pretty much exactly the same. Because evolution takes a long time. And so when you think about the human nature in general, we are creatures of emotions and social. We are doing things. If you take any actions that you do um, and any decisions that you ever made, you will see that they all come from emotions. Mm -hmm. And they are very much related to your social part of your life. So relationships are very important, um, much more than what actually people realize. Because like I said, that's how we're built. Yeah. So having a good circle around you is definitely one of the most important things. And you know, if if the person who's watching this right now follows me on social media and read my posts and watch my videos, that person knows that I'm always talking about this. Like it's definitely like one of my top three subjects. Mm -hmm. The people who are around the most will dictate your life. Mm -hmm. Literally. Like if you're around five people who drag you down, well guess what? You'll be fucking down. You'll be very low, right? Mm -hmm. If you are around five people who are positive, who motivates you, guess what? You will elevate and grow with them. So at the end of the day, the people you row around the most have a tremendous impact on you and the person you become. So social and relationships are very important. And you know, one of my biggest secret, um, I think, in life in general, um, is that I, I'm very picky with who I choose to let in into my life. Uh -huh. uh, and sometimes people are like, you're too picky, but I'd rather be that way than allowing negative people or people who don't have my best interest at heart come into my life. Um, so in reality, I keep a very few amount of people close to me. Um, I have a lot of acquaintances, right, and people I interact with on a daily basis, but in reality, I don't have many people who are close to me, and I'd rather it to be that way because at the end of the day, the people who are around me the most will influence much more than what you actually realize the person who that you are, basically. So, if you're not picky with who you choose to let in your life, then you will just suddenly end up with you know a bunch of random people who don't even really care about you. And so that will mess up your whole life. Like, when you really think about it, right? Like, the people, like, people in life are not oftentimes depressed or sad because of like, you know, like most of the time it's about social, right? Someone cheated on you or someone betrayed you or someone did something that you didn't like. Like pretty much all of our problems come from our social environment. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, really, really big with who I choose to mm -hmm. let in to my life. And I, like I said, I'd rather it to be that way because I, like, I'd rather have 
five friends who are really there for me, like who I know have my back, and if I fucked up, they will be there for me, versus 500 people who don't care that much, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's much more healthy that way, uh, because you just cannot, like, have, you know, those deep relationships with a lot of people at the same time. Like, it's just, like, it doesn't make any sense. It, it's, it's losing the definition of the word in itself, right? Like deep relationships. So I, I think it's important to have good relationships, good people around you, because they are a big part of who you are, and they will certainly influence where you are going in life, right? If you are, for example, around people who are always telling you that uh, you need to do this, do this, do this, become this, that, the other, right? To, to you know, make it, quote unquote, uh, in the society norms, then guess what, that's what you're probably going to do because as humans, like I said, we are social creators and we have a bias in, in our brain and that bias is that we want to be loved by other people. We want to feel accepted. We want to feel like we have a place in society. And so, if you are around the wrong people, well, guess what, you will lose that feeling. You will not feel as if you have a place because those people will not you know, push you in the right directions. And so, at the end of the day, you may end up in a situation where you never thought you would be because of the fact that you have a bad environment around you. So, it's, it's even one of the main things I focus on in my life, you know, who are around me. And oftentimes, and like people, like I'm very, uh, let's say, direct with that. Like, if someone I realize that does not have my back or, you know, is does not have my best interest at Hard, like I kick them out very quick. Like I don't, I don't even explain why. I'm just like, you know, go away, like uh -huh. leave. <laughs> you know, like and I'd rather it to be that way. Like I said, it's more healthy, I believe. So it's important that you keep a good circle. Um, and if we talk more about love, right, relation, more intimate relationship, I think it's also very important uh, because, uh, like, that's how we are. Okay, yep. like if you look at if you look at it from a evolutionary standpoint, we're very much also like animals. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think like we are this special creature and we're so different and we're so unique. Well, not really. Yeah. <laughs> like we're just animals. Like we want to eat, we want to, to sleep, we want to find a partner, we want to uh, have kids, right? That, that's what animals are doing as well. Like we're very much similar to animals. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day. Uh, Intimate relationships are very important, I believe, and that's I have a similar approach to that with my approach of my social environment in general. I'm very picky with who I choose to actually spend time with, even on the intimate relationship. I cannot be with someone who has a negative mindset. I just can't. I don't allow this around me because I know it will impact and drag me down. So I'm not even. I don't even entertain those relationships. Like if I meet someone and that person always complains, always blame others, is a, is just a negative person in general, I'm just not even gonna answer the text. And I know it sounds rude, I know it sounds direct, I, I know that. That's what people say often. You're, you know, people are like, oh Anthony, why you're so you know, <laughs> why you're so rude with other people? I'm not rude. I'm just picking who I want to be around with. And that comes from what that person energy is actually bringing into this world. If you're actually bringing good energy, then I'm most likely going to want to be around you, right? Like, in the same manners of how I kick people out fast of my life, it's the same one that I bring in fast, people fast mm -hmm. in my life. I know that's very uh, not common to hear that, but if I see that someone has a good energy, good intention, um, has a you know positive mindset, I want this person to be in my life, you understand? So it really comes down to what this person is actually showing me and then after I can decide if I want to be around them or not. And let me just end with this. When I say that I kick out people of my life and all of these things, it's not because they're a bad person, right? Yeah. They're not a bad person. We just have different interests. We're, we're just thinking differently. So it's not even about if that person is good or if that person is bad. It's just about do I connect with you, right? We have the same interests. Do we think the same? And if not, then like there's no problem with that. Like you know, like it's not. 
it's not even a, a negative way of looking at it. Like you cannot take these words that I just said and turn them into negative because there's no negativity in that. You know, just because someone doesn't have your best interest at heart or someone doesn't think the way you do, it doesn't mean that they're a good person. They're just different. Mm-hmm. And maybe that they are not meant to be with you. So, you know, you can just, when, when, when both of you realize that, you can just go separate ways. There's no problem with that. We'll all be fine at the end of the day. So, I guess that would be my answer. <laughs> uh, allow me into your life, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure, bro. Yeah. Um so with that said, um I really appreciate your time man. It was really fun and uh I mean your um uh, perspective is pretty matured and it's like oh, I I haven't met anyone who was who's 18 and having the, all of these things going on and so I appreciate it. It's, that it's means a lot. Thank, thank you. I really 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 thank you. It's really great to hear from you and uh, we'll stay in touch dude. Um thanks a lot for uh talking. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah man.